Trump is the first person ever without a single qualification. He's going to walk over and take charge of the most powerful country in the world. Of course, we have every right to be shocked. How can we not be shocked when the type of rhetoric that we've been exposed to for the last year is simply unprecedented? I mean, I don't have to, you know, list here for you the, the, the more outrageous things that he said, not to mention I'm in a masjid and I'm not allowed to say and quote what he himself has said because we're sitting in a sacred house of God. But just to think about what he said about Latinos, about Muslims, about the disabled, mocking a disabled person. I mean, wallahi, how can we not be in shock? Making fun of African Americans, blacks, of course, uh, his, his backlash on the Muslims. Uh, of course, the whole very awkward issue of preying on, on women. At least a dozen women have accused him of, of what they've accused him of. SubhanAllah, I mean, what is to be said? His narcissistic, uh, you know, tendencies, his bombastic style. Uh, decades, even before this, his decades of, of living, uh, you know, the, the, the very, very flamboyant lifestyle that is not becoming of a leader this is not becoming of a leader and that's why he was put on on celebrity TV that's why he was put on daytime television because he is entertainment that's exactly what he is and for somebody like this to now become the president of our country I mean subhanallah not to mention his dubious business practices his numerous uh, failures the previous directors of the CIA, the FBI, numerous ambassadors have publicly distanced themselves from this person, yet he still won. So yes, point number two, shock. And this was no doubt the number one factor why large groups of people voted for Donald Trump. We need to be frank here, not everybody who voted for Trump is a bigoted racist. Many are but not everybody. And we as Muslims need to recognize that. There are many people who voted for Trump primarily because for, uh, of economic reasons. They thought that he'd be better for the economy. So that's uh, definitely hindsight is 2020. Another reality of hindsight, and Michael Moore mentions this as well, he calls it the last stand of the angry white man. This is Michael Moore speaking, who himself is an angry white man, but on the other side of the political spectrum. Uh, Michael Moore himself, he, he mentions this, he goes that the reality is that the angry white man, which is middle class and even upper class America, Caucasian America, is scared. The face of America is changing, and the melatonin content is increasing, okay? And this is terrifying white America. We saw this with the election of Obama, and that was like the last straw. This was now a reaction from that, uh, that, uh, that demographics of people, and this is a visceral reaction. They literally think they need to fight in order to survive. And so publicly, and there are elements of racism here, publicly they're in polite conversation, they might not be racist, but when they go behind the booth and close the curtain, they know exactly what they want. And all you need to do is to look at Brexit. This is a global phenomenon. Look at Europe and its, and its relationship with the immigrants. This is a global phenomenon. It's not just in America. Europe and the Western Empire is changing. And they are terrified at that change. They don't want it to change. And so these reactions are in hindsight expected. We should have seen this coming. That there is this last stand. We need to fight to the end no matter what the stakes. And if Trump is the only guy that's going to build that wall, if Trump is the only guy that's going to ban the immigrants, then that's the way they're going to go forward. Even if deep down inside, many of them recognize this to be racist. But survival of the fittest. It is their country according to them. Allahu Akbar. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, all praise.